Good afternoon. My name is Gomazova Tatiana Sergeyevna. I am a student of the fifth course of the Faculty of Medicine of Privolsky Research Medical University from Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, my scientific supervisor is a teacher of the Department of Foreign Languages, Volk Vladimir Sergeyevich. And today I'm going to tell you about Nikolai Vladimirovich Timofey Frisovsky, the bison of Soviet genetics. Nikolai Vladimirovich Timofey Frisovsky is a world famous Soviet genetic scientist. He was born in Moscow in 1900 in the family of an engineer. The future great genetic scientist didn't receive a diploma of higher education. During the Civil War, Timofey Frisovsky interrupted his studies as he fought in the Red Army. He studied and worked under the supervision of famous professors Kaltsov and Chetverikov. During the years of their joint work, Timofey Frisovsky suggested that a single mutation causes multiple changes in appearance. Moreover, he studied radiation and offered to protect radiologists with lead approaches. Timofey Frisovsky was a unique scientist. He was an expert in many fields, but for a long time he was an outstanding scientist without a signed title. Daniel Granin called Timofey Frisovsky the bison, who had incredible knowledge in the field of evolution and population genetic for his time. In 1925, the famous German neuropathologist Oscar Fock was looking for a young and talented genetic scientist to work in Berlin. Such a person turned out to be Timofey Frisovsky, whose works were ahead of modern science for many years. After a few years of his work in Germany, Timofey Frisovsky, together with the future Nobel Prize winner Max Delbrack, created a biophysical model of the gene structure and mechanisms for its change. During Timofey Frisovsky's work in Germany, the Soviet Union became an unfriendly country to genetic scientists. That is why Timofey Frisovsky couldn't return home. The war, the Lysenkoism, and the session of the Vasknil didn't allow a Soviet genetic scientist to develop. Timofey Frisovsky refused to return to the Soviet Union on the advice of his friends, scientists. He understood that he would be arrested. That is why Nikolai Vladimirovich was called a traitor to the motherland. Timofey Frisovsky continued to work in fascist Germany. Nikolai Vladimirovich wasn't a politician. He called himself a man of science who would never take up arms. Timofey Frisovsky participated in the war another way. He saved Russians, Jews and many other nationalities, taking them into his laboratory staff and giving people an opportunity to, to survive get food and roof over their heads. Exactly in the laboratory of Timofey Frisovsky, ionizing radiation and its effect on radiation sickness were studied. Thus, the mechanism of accumulation of harmful mutations and the hereditary transmission was formulated under the leadership of Nikolai Vladimir. The world-famous target theory also appeared thanks to a Soviet scientist Timofey Frisovsky. So, Timofey Frisovsky became the father of radioecology and radiobiology. The Russian trace in the discovery of the DNA structure also stretched to Nikolai Vladimirovich Timofey Frisovsky. His friendship with Max Delbrack, who later immigrated to the United States, was the trigger in the discovery of the idea of DNA. Delbrack devoted himself to genetics and voiced the thoughts of Timofey Frisovsky to his student. James Watson. After that, Watson called himself the scientific grandson of Timofey Frisovsky and became a Nobel laureate for the discovery of the structure of the DNA molecule. In the 1950s, Timofey Frisovsky was nominated for the Nobel Prize for research on the structure of the gene, but the Soviet Union called the great genetic scientist a traitor to the motherland and sent him to a con concentration camp. Nowadays, Nikolai Vladimirovich Timofey Frisovsky is considered to be a great Soviet genetic scientist who made a huge contribution to the development of genetic, radiobiology, medical radiology and the discovery of the structure of DNA.
Thank you for your attention.